In the overview to annotations, I said I would do a video on the detail of annotations, and that's what I'm going to do now. Remember, annotations are always done in full screen mode, so I'll go into full screen mode. And annotations are page based, so you have to click in the center of the page you want to annotate. I'll click here. That then makes this page the focus for annotations. I'm now just going to spend a wee while going along the toolbar here explaining what each of the different annotation tools are and how you would use them. First of all we have save. It's pretty obvious really that once you've put annotations in you can save them. Burn. I explained in the overview video that annotations are an overlay to the music. They don't actually change the original file unless you click on the burn button on the toolbar. What that does is it makes a permanent change to the music. It actually changes the file. You can't undo it, you can't delete the annotation once they're burnt on. However, burning on annotations is the way that you get annotations transferred to something like the Mac or to the iPad. Also, annotations that are burnt on will be printed when the music is printed. Cancel just does what it says, it cancels what particular annotation you're working on. Remove all, that removes all the annotations from a piece of music. If you have a lot of annotations and you want to return it to its original form, you remove them all. Zoom is quite useful. It means if you're doing something fine, you can zoom in and you can put in detailed annotations using the zoom, return to a fit to viewer. Keyboard is useful for on-screen keyboards for uh, using with a touch screen and it brings up the on-screen keyboard. However, there's other ways of bringing up the on-screen keyboard. Usually there's a little tab at the side you just click on and the on-screen keyboard comes up. The select button. If you have an annotation on your piece of music, so let's just start. I'm going to put on an annotation. I'm just going to draw a, a circle around here to highlight that. Once I go to select, if I click on that particular annotation, it gives me that annotation I can now move around. Or I can resize it. This is a delete tool, so whatever annotation you have selected, if I click on there, it deletes that annotation. The highlight annotation. This produces a transparent or semi-transparent colour that you can put over things on the music. The two ways you can use it is by a rectangle. So once you've selected that, you can draw a rectangle of highlight. Or if you use the freehand tool, you can select a fine, medium or broad pointed highlighter. I'll choose a broad one and then you can just simply draw using your mouse or if it's a touch screen using your stylus or finger to put on the highlight. Let's see what properties then we have for the highlight. So if we go to select tool and select one of the highlights, you'll notice now a little window pops up here which has got some properties. Allow rotation, that allows you to rotate the highlight and also to change the colour of the highlight. So if I click on the picker, I can choose any colour for the highlight. I'll choose a blue one here and it changes it to blue. In the Advanced tab, there are more properties you can work with. These I would generally leave, although if you want to play around with these, you've got access to all of the features of that particular annotation. So once I've set the highlight to blue, if I go back in and make another highlight, a rectangular highlight, that will be blue as well. But the pen still is the default colour. It hasn't changed. If I wanted to change the colour of the freehand highlighter, again, I would select it and I would choose the colour of that, so I could make that green. And now if I choose again the freehand highlighter and I highlight something, it'll highlight in green. So you can set the colours for highlighting both the rectangle and the freehand. The pen tool allows you to draw a fine line like that. And there are no other properties of the pen tool. Okay, let's look at the text tool now. This allows you to put a text box onto the music. And if you double click on it, you can type in stuff here. If I want to change the properties of that, let's just get rid of the keyboard just now. Uh, here is the properties window here. I can change the text color. I can change the fill colour, I can change the font, so if I change it to a larger font, let's say I want to go to 20 point bold, OK, and there it is, changed to that size. Text boxes are always in a transparent background, so as you move them across the music, then you can see 
it's a transparent background on the text box. Stickies on the other hand allow you to put a sticky note onto the music but it will always be on top of the music. So it's similar to the text box but it's a non-transparent text box. Again you can change the point size and there are some advanced tools you can do in there. These are a whole collection of different lines. You can draw straight lines, connected lines, freehand lines and arrows. Now the difference between the freehand line and the pen, if we just go to here and we start drawing, the difference here is we can change the properties of this pen. So if I select this pen, I can change now the colour of the pen, I can change the width of the line, I can do all of these things, which unlike the pen, which is a fixed size. I'll change the colour of that, let's make it red. Okay, and again, if we go back in and select the line again and start drawing, it remembers the set. Same thing for some shapes, either transparent shapes or filled shapes, you can draw them onto your music. I think I'm just going to tidy this up a bit before I go any further, just let's select some of these things. Now you can delete them as well by just pressing the delete key on the keyboard. So I'll tidy this up a wee bit. Okay. These are a set of galleries of standard musical terms that you can add. There are, first of all, if you're working with a chord charts and a guitar, for instance, you have a full set of the shapes of the chords in here. And you can take any one of them and you can drop it onto the music. Now, you can change the size and colour of any of these drop annotations. So I'll change that to red. And I can judge the size I want by changing it in here, and that's the size that will appear on here. So to drop that annotation onto the music, I just position my hand there and click, and it drops it on there. And then I can pick another one, and it remembers the colour and size, and I can drop that as well. Quick Drop are a number of useful tools for doing things like fingering, bow marks, foot and pedal marks. Again, all you do is select the item you want, and you can change the colour and size of it here. So if I make that a wee bit smaller, and let's make that um, a blue. And again, if I just drop that on, on the music. Select it again, drop it on there. And it's the same thing for adding notes, for adding bar lines and dynamics. You can just select your dynamic and then drop it into the music like that. Browsing for an image, this allows you to add any image onto your music. If I click on there, uh, let's go to my pictures and let's go down to the bottom here. There's a picture of Mozart, so I'll pick up that and I can drop that image. This is where we do rehearsal marks and bar marks. Again, all you do is select the rehearsal mark or bar mark you want to use. Change its size and colour to whatever size and colour you want it and then drop it. You can do the same thing with bar numbers and if you want to use a number bigger than um, 100 then you can go to custom and you can type in anything you want there. So if I wanted to put in D24 and I could put that on there. The eraser allows you to put a white overlay over the top of the music. Again it's not actually changing anything unless you burn it it only puts in a white overlay which you can remove later. Finally, the web links. This allows you to put a web link onto a piece of music which is then an active link which if you click on will launch a browser or a piece of music or whatever. So I just do that. Now let's say I want to make it to a, a website so I click on there to select it and I can put in different text. So I'll put in here um, I want the heading Power Music and I want to go to the Power Music website. And that's the URL I want to associate with it. I can also browse to a local file. So if I had a music file or a video or something on my hard drive, I could link that to the annotation. So when I click on it, it would launch the video file or launch the music file. So let's just save this now. To show you that that is actually a link which we can use, if I click on the link, it will go away and it will launch the Power Music website. Now that could, as I say, be a video on YouTube or it could be a video 
or an audio file stored locally in your hard drive. The purpose of this video is just to go into a bit more detail about the properties of annotations. You probably don't need to know most of this, but if you were wanting to put in custom annotations and links and change some of the more detailed properties of an annotation, I've shown you how to do that.